Okay, we are back with more soap. We're up to season two, episode nine. Um, I'm just going to let the narrator introduce it. I'm not even going to bother introducing the episodes anymore. I'm also very tired, so I apologize if I'm not as active in this video because I'm on my period and I'm just exhausted and in pain. <laughs> but I have my friend and I have my coffee and I'm ready to get going on this week's episode of Soap. In the last episode of Soap, Chester came home from the hospital still not knowing who he is. But the Major convinced him he's a colonel. With two loonies to look after, Benson would love to put them in the old soldier's home. When Jessica came home, Corinne told her she's pregnant, but she's afraid to tell Tim because he might leave home. Jody told Dennis since he's marrying Carol, he no longer considers Dennis's apartment home. Mary's professor drove her home and tried to take advantage of her. And when Bert came home and saw them, he thought they were carrying on, so he left home, got drunk, and went to Sally's home. Whatever it happened to home sweet home? Confused? You won't be after this week's episode of So. This is the story of two sisters. Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates. And these are the Campbells. And this is So. coffee in the world. Tim, would you just relax? Relax? How can I relax? My first day of work since I left the priesthood. What am I qualified to do? Bless? <laughs> Bert and Danny gave me this job because they felt sorry for me. Oh, Tim, that's not true. All my life, I wanted to do something for the betterment of society. 
And what can I possibly do way up there on a girder that can make a positive contribution to mankind? Slip. <laughs> Good morning, Mother. How's Daddy doing this morning? Oh, Eunice, he is 100% better than last night. Really? Yes. He called me by my right name. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. He said, good morning, Jessica. Me too. He saw me in the hall, waved and said, good morning, Jessica. <laughs> oh, Simpson, get me General Eisenhower on the phone. <laughs> Imagine Colonel Tate trying to wrangle a discharge by pretending to be Marlena Dietrich. I'm gonna go insane. Me and these ice cream trucks are gonna have it out one of these days. In love again. <laughs> What am I to do? Run, Traitor! Traitor, you call my lady D. Chick a traitor after all the time I've given to the troops? You can bore me. Bus is loose. This is another one of those times when nobody says anything until I'm out of the room. It's okay. I'll go. I'll find someone to talk to. Maybe after school I'll get married and buy a condominium. Then my wife and I can invite you over for dinner, and we can leave so you can talk. Goodbye, Jessica. Daddy, why are you acting like Marlena Dietrich? Who should I act like, Eleanor Roosevelt? But who told you you were Marlena Dietrich? Well, it's a hell of a lot safer than blowing up the damn neighborhood. Well, that's true. Isn't anyone going to ask for to see? I don't think so, dear. Uh, Miss Dietrich, why don't I take you upstairs and you can relax? Falling in love again. Never won. Oh, come on, Tim Mala. Drive you to work, okay? Good luck, dear. Thanks. I kind of like the new Chester better. You okay? Oh, Benson, I just don't think I can do it. I just don't think I can go on acting cheerful. Well, then stop. If I stop acting cheerful, I'll cry. Then cry. I can't. Why not? In front of you? Well, I'll leave the room. Cry alone? Well, I'll stay here and cover my eyes. I haven't cried in a long time. Well, you sure deserve a good one. Okay. I'm going to do it. Good. Sure you can. No, I can't. You're trying too hard. No, that's not it. What is it then? I don't have to anymore. Why not? You cheered me up. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thank you, Vince. Anytime. Good morning. Want some more coffee? This is my 25th cup. <laughs> I haven't blinked since midnight. What's the matter? Bert didn't come home. He's dead, I know it. <laughs> come on, Ma, he's not dead. I'm sure there's some logical explanation. Sure. Like death. <laughs> he's lying dead in an alley someplace. Some maniac probably killed him for a chick with... <laughs> he probably just fell asleep at the office. I called the office all night. He's not at the office. He's dead. <laughs> He's not dead. I called the police at 4 o'clock this morning. Did you know that a person isn't a missing person for 72 hours? <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> well, why didn't you wake me up? I didn't want to disturb you. Disturb me? Bert's dead, and you don't want to disturb me? He's not dead. How dare you say something like that? <laughs> Where have you been? 
Are you all right? What happened? You didn't hear? <laughs> no. What? About the airplane? <laughs> no. It wasn't on the news. I didn't watch the news. Now, what happened? Last night, I'm driving home, right? You know, along that highway. All of a sudden, out of nowhere. <laughs> a plane lands right there in the middle of the highway. Nobody could move. I mean, the thing took up the whole road. <laughs> I mean, uh, two Hondas, a Datsun, and a Subaru got through. They drove under the wheel. I thought for sure you would see me on television. I mean, there was a television crew there, and uh, I waved. You mean you had to stay there all night? Well, they asked for volunteers. <laughs> to help take the wings off the plane so the traffic could get through. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's not an easy job. You know, they really put those wings on pretty tight. <laughs> well, as uh, long as you're alive, I'm going to go to work. You'd been dead. I was gonna knock off a half a day out of respect. Oh, <laughs> Goodbye, Ma. Get some sleep. <clears throat> well, I, I hope you weren't too worried. I'm so glad you're home. Now, what do you want for breakfast? Oh, anything. I don't care. Anything. Huh? A couple of eggs over easy, Canadian bacon crisps, sourdough toast, little tangerine juice. <laughs> So, uh, what's new? Nothing much. No? No. What did you do yesterday? Nothing much. No? No. I thought you went to school. Oh, that's right, I did. I forgot. You forgot? <laughs> How do you forget school? Well, I've been up all night. My brain is like with eggs. <laughs> so? How is school? It's okay, I guess. How's your professor? My professor? Yeah, the, the good-looking professor. He's all right, I guess. Yeah, that's uh, the good-looking, charming professor. What? Nothing. <laughs> oh. Mary, is there anything uh, you want to say to me? No. You sure? Well. Yeah. You mean... There's nothing you think that we ought to discuss? No. <laughs> Is there anything you want to discuss? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> I don't want any eggs, nothing, no breakfast, nothing. I ate on the plane. <laughs> six so we never got around to face masks well i never had a daughter and the boys never wanted to do this <laughs> well jody wants <laughs> it's a uh, it's like having a mother it's like having a daughter mary didn't I'm complete just sorry hers. it took so long to happen oh i'm so glad it did oh, oh. <laughs> Look at this. 
All this space here on top of this building? Yeah, that's where we put the heating unit. Most of this is wasted space. So? So? So you put on a coat of paint, you hang a few lamps, and bang! Instant office space. Office space? Office space? <laughs> that office space is only four feet high. <laughs> I'm way ahead of you, Bert. <laughs> Midgets. <laughs> midgets? Yeah. Yeah, we rented out to midgets. Midgets? And he's okay. He's... Bert, I'm telling you, it's a great idea. New business model. <laughs> Go on the concrete. Right. Tim's having a rough day. How's everything? Perfect. <laughs> Great. No problems. Everything's okay. <laughs> Couldn't be better. Couldn't be better. <laughs> Is that cement? <laughs> oh, yeah, Bert. It's cement. Oh, well, as long as everything's okay. <laughs> Fine. Tim, is that blood? Where? On your nose? Oh, yeah, it's blood. A little blood on my nose. Okay. Great. A little cement, a little blood on my nose. Fine. How did you get the blood on your nose? From falling. I think from falling. You fell? In the cement. How did you fall? When the guy yelled help. When what guy yelled help? The guy who fell first. How did he fall? He slipped. How did he slip, Tim? When the bologna dropped out of my lunch pail. You reached out to grab him. Then you fell. You see it happen? I suddenly understand Tim's wanting to work for God because he is horrible at relaying messages. Well, I've been in this business a long time, Tim. Then I tripped. On the bologna. You guys are uncanny. <laughs> what happened to the other guy, the guy who fell? Oh, he's okay. He landed in a big sand thing. Truck? <laughs> right, the truck. He broke his thermos. I'll bet. Well, I've taken enough of your time. So, right, you just drop by any time you like, Jim. Actually, I, I came by to quit. I wrote my resignation on the bologna wrapper. <laughs> yeah, well, everything seems to be in order. You forgot the date. No, oh, there it is. It's right there. So yesterday the bologna expired. I see you. Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. What are you doing? Why are you quitting? Come on, look. Aren't you happy here? I'm a jinx. Tim, you're not a jinx. Bert, I almost killed somebody today. I already have my mother's blood on my hands. I think you're both terrific, and I'll never forget what you've done for me. But for everybody involved, it's better if I go. Goodbye. So long. And thanks. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's for the best. I don't think he was cut out for this kind of work. Yeah, I guess so. But, Bert, about my idea for the office space for the midgets. Midgets? Mid Will you stop with the midgets? Midgets get office space for free, Danny. They do? Of course. Well, you never heard of the Small Business Administration? <laughs> Open mine. Open mine. <laughs> this is hilarious, but my stomach hurts. That's what the problem oh, is. I'm sorry. I hope you like it. I hope it helps. <laughs> well, I hope that's the last present so you all can just clear out of there. <laughs> I was wondering, did anyone happen to hear about a plane that landed on the highway? <laughs> Okay, that's it. Party's over. Up and up. No more coffee. I got so many lovely presents. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's very nice. Good luck and goodbye. We are not finished yet. I want to make a toast. With what? You don't have anything in your hand. And it doesn't work otherwise? No. It'll work, Mother. I want to make a toast to Jody and Carol. May they be as happy as we all are. <laughs> well, uh, 
Perhaps that wasn't the correct toast to make. It was a lovely toast, Jess. Oh, Mary, I don't know. I mean, look at all of us. I'm married to a man who doesn't remember. Eunice is in love with an escaped convict. Karen is married to a depressed ex-priest. Carol is going to marry a homosexual. I forgot that everybody knew about Eunice and Dutch. Elaine is married to somebody who had to marry her or get killed. <laughs> You're the only one, Mary, with a normal marriage. So, I think that the toast should be, may everyone end up with as beautiful a marriage as Mary's. <laughs> oh, I guess that wasn't the correct toast to make up. Eunice, please take everyone out in the kitchen and show them the refrigerator. Yes, yes. Hey, we're really going to make Vincent mad. Good, you know, I, I've never seen your refrigerator. Oh, it's a terrific refrigerator. I love refrigerators. <laughs> oh, Mary, what is it? <gasps> Bert is having an affair. Oh, I know. Yes. Are you sure? He's been working later and later, and the other night, he stayed out all night. He came home with this cockamamie story about a plane landing on the highway. And when he came home that morning, Jeff, he had already showered. How do you know? His hair was damp. He smelled of soap. A woman's soap. Men are so dumb to shower. I mean, Chester used to come home after a long, hard day's work smelling better than when he left. <laughs> How could he do it, Jess? How could he do that to me? Uh... <laughs> Mary, you have to talk to him. Are you kidding? Mary, you have to. I mean, one affair doesn't mean the end of a marriage. I mean, if it did, Chester and I would have been finished on the honeymoon. <laughs> Damn. On your honeymoon? Well, looking back, probably. Because I... I really can't think of any other reason for the chambermaid's underpanties to end up in my suitcase. <laughs> It hurts, Mary. I know. I know. And you feel so ugly and clumsy and stupid. So self-conscious you don't even want to walk around in front of him. You don't even want to talk in front of him. And you're sure he hates you and everything's all over. But it isn't. It isn't, Mary. It feels like it is. I know. I know. Isn't this nice? <laughs> nice? My husband is having an affair and you're calling it nice? But you know what is nice about it, Mary? I always come running to you for help. This is the first time I've ever been able to help you. Oh, Jesse, you always help. Just by being you and being here, you you always help. I... Mm. Okay, that's it. Tour's over. Refrigerator's closed. Let's move them out. Hey, 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 hey. I knew they were going to make Vincent mad and treat upon his area. Will Jody's upcoming marriage to Carol work? How will things work out for Jessica now that Chester thinks he's Marlena Dietrich? How long will Tim's marriage to Corinne work now that he's out of work? Will Bert and Mary's marriage continue to work now that Bert thinks Mary's schoolwork wasn't really work? And since Bert's airplane story didn't work, will Mary find out what Bert was really working on with someone from work? 
These questions and many others will be answered in the next episode of Soap. Okay, that was Season 2, Episode 9. My stomach is killing me, so I'm not even going to comment.